Greetings everyone from the back of my car. Alright, today I'm coming to you from my very own vehicle, which is a view that you have been seeing quite frequently in the past couple weeks. Does this move a lot when I move? Mm -hmm. Alright, as far as announcements go this week, we are continuing the quarantine challenge. Um, and we are looking forward to Zooms on Wednesdays and Sundays. However, there will not be a Zoom meeting on Easter Sunday, okay? All right, now I have a challenge for you. You're about to watch some clips of your leaders doing charades, but there's a twist. It's called Ghost Charades because you can't actually see our faces. We're underneath a sheet. Um, so see if you can guess what we are acting out. As many of you are very aware, this upcoming Sunday is Easter Sunday, and while it might look very different for most of you, it is still a holiday that we celebrate, the day that Jesus rises from the dead. Um, and there's a lot that goes on in between today, which is Wednesday and Sunday, um, which happens to be Good Friday, Easter Saturday, and then Easter Sunday. So. On Good Friday, we know Jesus is crucified. He walks his cross up the hill to Golgotha where he is crucified with two people, one on his right, one on his left, um, and, he, and he dies on the cross. He dies and is buried. He's buried in a tomb. Um, and then comes a passage from Matthew. So here now from Matthew 27, verse 62. The next day, the one after Preparation Day, which was Friday, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, After three days I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples might come and steal the body and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. 
Take a guard, Pilate said. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and they made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting a guard. This passage talks about how people knew that Jesus said he was going to rise again after three days. And the officials were like, we should do something about this to make sure that he doesn't pull a fast one and pretend to come back to life. And so he takes guards, Pilate orders guards to stand in front of the tomb that Jesus was just buried in to make sure that nobody can pull any tomfoolery on them at this point. One thing we don't have from the gospel accounts is how the disciples were feeling. We don't really have a concrete idea of how they felt and their emotions during these three days that Jesus was actually dead. So we can only speculate. But if I were a disciple, I would imagine I would be, be pretty devastated and I would be uncertain and I would be scared and I would, I would wonder what was coming next. I don't really know. They're afraid. They're afraid for their lives. They're, they're scared of death. And so there's lots of uncertainty that's coming up in their lives, in their whole life's work now. They've been traveling with Jesus for three years, and all of a sudden he's dead and they have no idea what to do. So I can imagine they're feeling a deep, deep level of uncertainty. We wait with the disciples in this groaning, in this longing for answers, and trying to figure out what does this mean for them? What what do they do now? Where do they go? Their whole lives have been turned upside down. And that's kind of how I feel right now with the virus. I'm sure many of you feel this right now as well. Your whole lives, your schools, your sports, your activities, your bands, everything has been taken. Your whole lives look different now than they did a month ago. And so we are also in this period of longing and of waiting and of not really knowing what's next, not really understanding how exactly Jesus is speaking and how exactly God is present right now because we are in the same boat as the disciples. And if this is a fairly parallel account like I think it is, the disciples are about to discover that Christ will rise again. And can you imagine what that's going to be like for us if we are seeking answers of, Jesus, what are you doing during this time? What are you trying to teach me from this experience? Just be open to what God might be doing in your life. Is he bringing up new emotions? Is he teaching you new gifts? If, is he pointing out flaws? What is he doing in your life? Just like these disciples, we have hope that Jesus is with us and Jesus hasn't abandoned us. In fact, Jesus defeated death, and we can find hope in that, knowing that we are God's beloved. We have that same relationship with God, and if we seek Him and we trust Him in that, there are some pretty amazing things to come. Let's close in prayer. Jesus, we know that you are here and present with us, even though sometimes it doesn't feel like it. We thank you for the gifts that you've given us and the things that you are teaching us. I pray you open up our eyes to understand what you are doing in this season and you are revealing yourself in new and exciting ways to us. God, I pray you give us the strength to continue on and the patience to follow through and to be loyal to our family and to our friends through this time. God, I thank you for the ability of technology and the fact that we can be together with our friends and family from afar. God, keep our Colbert community strong and keep this global community strong. In your name we pray. Amen.